Okay, so I am joined by Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson, uh, ice dancers from Great Britain and 2023 European silver medalists. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank so you. we're here in Montreal at your training center. Yes. Uh, and before we talk about sort of what happens here, can you can you tell us sort of? I, I think the last time we spoke to you was shortly after the European Championships. You went, of course, to the World Champions Championships from there. Mm -hmm. Fourth place finish you know, a few points away from the podium. Talk to us about how the World Championships went and how you feel about the result. Oh my gosh. Well, firstly, we love to compete in Japan. So the fact that we got to go there, we were just counting down the seconds and really soaked in the whole experience, the energy of the crowd, and just being in a place that we love so much. And then to put out two skates that were the two best skates of our season, that is so gratifying and the note that we really wanted to end on. And then to see the placement that that had us in, I think, it was so exciting for us and just an honor to be that close to the podium because that's something that we dream of. Mm -hmm. Lewis, anything to add to that? Yeah, um, and I think too, like as you train throughout the year and I think us last season, we really wanted to push how much we could give in a competition as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, not skate cautiously because it's, you're not gonna get the results you want mm -hmm. from that. And I think for us going into Worlds, we wanted that and we were able to achieve that. And of course, it's so like exhilarating when the fans and, the whole of the arenas, all about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Following an Olympic season where there's retirements or teams taking time off or coaching changes or partner changes and so forth, there is often an opportunity to you know, leapfrog or move up mm -hmm. in, in the rankings and so forth. Did you feel that as pressure, an opportunity? Mm. Did you approach the season with that in mind in any way? We definitely felt that it was an opportunity. Every season is an opportunity for us, but I think with things shuffling around and with two programs that we felt were extremely strong and crowd pleasers, we thought, why not push it, see how far we can go, see where we can end up this season. And we had so many firsts throughout the season. Um, so overall, it was just a really wonderful experience for us. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of those firsts? Yeah, so first Grand Prix in the UK, yeah. and that was just, I mean, a memory that I will cherish forever. I think we felt so much support and it was emotional really skating there and feeling the, the crowd behind us and really knowing that we're representing them and there's people we grew up with in the audience. It was just, it was overwhelming, but in the best way. And then we had to learn to focus while we're actually out there, um, which was a great lesson. And then first Grand Prix final too which was, I felt like I was at Disneyland. It was the best thing ever. It was so fun. And also three teams on a warm up. There seems to be a lot more space, a little less stress, looking around for other people. And then what was another one? First medal? Um, well, Europeans? backing it up to the beginning of the season, like first time winning two challengers as well was a huge step forward for us. And I think part of the process to lead us to where we got to by the end of the season. And of course, first time on the European podium as well. And um, First time top five at Worlds. Top five at Worlds. <laughs> lots so of uh, uh, lots of Grand airplane Prix's. points <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're all where do we go? All over the place. No, it was great. Yeah. Finally, cracking that top five at the World Championships. How did that feel to be in that final group? Oh. I mean, I think that even when we saw like the draw for the rhythm dance that was a huge moment just yeah. to be skating that late at a world championships was crazy to think just i think it was like five years before that that we were like the first group qualifying yeah that. not qualifying for the three um, right. <laughs> so that was wild for us and like for me that i really that took took me back mm -hmm. um but of course like making that top five and getting into the final group it's it's just honestly it's exciting yeah and um, we're lucky that we get to train with like the majority of that group. Um, so it feels comfortable for us to be on the ice there, but um, yeah, like it's just exciting. Yeah. Did you have to sort of talk yourself down or were you so in the zone that you were just, it was sort of, you were oblivious to the other people on the ice? I, A little bit. I mean, yeah. it's kind of part of like, we compete alongside these people all season as well. Mm -hmm. So we get to know them throughout the years as too. So mm -hmm. um, we're at the end of the day, we're there to compete and that kind of feels for us like normal as well. Um, but yeah, it's just that extra layer of kind of magic that comes with it. Okay, can you talk to us about your, your off season? How has it been? How did you spend it? What does that look like? So off season was very different this year because we had the opportunity to be in fantasy on ice. 
and we've never done a show before. We've done galas at competitions, but that was our first show, let alone tour, let alone tour in Japan for two weeks. So it was a dream come true. We got to get really close with so many skaters that we've looked up to over the years to perform for such an enthusiastic crowd. I'm sure you can imagine with Yuzuru Hanyu and just sold out every night. So I'm much, yeah, you know, like, I don't know if people know who he is, but he's a big deal. <laughs> and um, it was such a cool experience for us. And we actually went in thinking, okay, this is usually we're training right now. Let's see what we can get out of this experience that will equip us to have momentum when we come back. So that was things like, performing no matter what. I almost missed one of the performance because I got the schedule wrong. Other days I was nervous, other days I wasn't, tired or not, and just knowing that you can perform your best regardless is very empowering. And I think that's something that I've really brought back from Japan and have used in the off season as we push ourselves with really challenging programs, elements, changes, and knowing that we are capable and we can do it. And, and Lewis, what did you sort of learn or draw from? I mean, tomorrow? the whole thing was, like as Lila said, like. The chance to, com uh, to compete, to perform <laughs> um, consecutively and like back to back like that is great to sort of feel like, oh, I just felt this way. Oh no, but it didn't matter. Yes. Um, and like the skating doesn't matter, like sort of thing. Like they don't care how you feel. Yeah. Um, just put on a show. Yeah. <laughs> and that was really great. And also getting a chance to sort of layer in different goals throughout each of the performances that we did was. Mm -hmm also great because it's not something you kind of get to do when you compete necessarily mm -hmm. um, but the whole experience was just like mind-blowing with the way that the audience would react yeah. um, getting to of course Yuzu was there but even for me like Johnny Weir like I grew up watching him and getting to meet him he's such an amazing person and then mm. I would watch him perform and I'd be like oh my god I, I used to copy that I copied that I learned <laughs> that spin I did that yeah, the yeah. drag like everything like, yeah. so it was so great just to be kind of alongside so many amazing skaters. It was And incredible. they were so welcoming. Like Johnny instantly took us under his wing. He was like, listen, this is what you do. This is where you go. Try this shop, try this restaurant. And we were on practice ice with him every day and with Gabby and Guillaume. And just to realize like, okay, we're in the show too, on the ice with this, these people. Pinch me, this is the coolest thing ever. And we just wanted to soak it all in. And so that was our off season more or less. And then, okay, we should probably start getting ready for competitions now and then End of August was our first competition. Right. Some skaters have talked about how special sort of the off season is, and that once you're in competition season, it feels like a train, yeah. and it's moving in one direction, and you're on it. Whereas yes. off season, can you talk about it? Like, do you relate to that? Can you compare the two? Absolutely, I relate to that. I think off season, it just feels like a sigh of relief because okay. I, I, the schedule's open, I have time, and I think the, the leisure of time is something that we all embrace in the off season because we can have the time and space to create and innovate and try things and go, down, go off on ta tangents that we won't necessarily use with elements, but just be, being able to be creative and not limit yourself because of time restrictions is very important and allows to have the product that then we present at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so talk to us about, I mean, you said it, you, you started competing in, uh, last month in August. Yeah. Can you tell us about, first let's look at the rhythm dance, your, your choice of music, the choreographic inspiration, how that came together? Yeah. yeah. We, actually, it was hard <laughs> <laughs> to choose rhythm dance music. Because um, there's so much to offer yeah, in the show. Yeah, there is a lot of there's good so tracks. so much. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to create something that sort of felt cohesive for the program, um, and so we landed on, I think this was our fifth concept. We had a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, so we landed on Sweet Dreams, and we wanted to make that into one full program. Yeah. And so we did a lot of editing with the tracks. Um, there's like three different versions happening at once. Uh, and I think it's really, I'm really happy and proud of where we got the music to. Um, and then also just like it sparked so many ideas and sort of different things that we could try as well Which is always great when the music kind of leads that in a program mm -hmm. um, And yeah, I'm really happy with our rhythm dance this year. It's cool. Yeah, and it's like Lewis said we went through so many different concepts but ended up with what we kind of wanted to do all along deep down because we both love that song so much and it's so beloved and catchy and also really invites us to explore a different side of our performance ability because it's a little more darker and sensual and there's attack and it is a courageous program because it's probably the most demanding 
okay. rhythm dance I've ever done. Right. And that's what we want. We asked for that and it's pushing us to grow as skaters and performers and it's a really great vehicle. A nice, that, sorry, so I was just going to say a nice bonus is that she's also Scottish. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, and right. she's just an amazing human, full stop. Um, you said it. That, I mean, it's interesting that you say this is the most difficult or energetic program because you are known as really dynamic skaters. <laughs> so have you, do you feel that you've taken it up another notch again this season? Yeah, so I think every season and even throughout the season, we just want to grow as much as we can and to fulfill our potential, explore our potential. And I think we realize that our strength is to be energetic and performers and entertaining and dynamic, as you said, but we wanted to just see, okay, can we push this more? Can we do things that you haven't seen before? Like we roll on the ice, because why not roll on the ice? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you're like soaking wet for the rest of the program, but oh well, it doesn't matter. But we are so lucky to work with Roman Hagenauer as our choreographer uh, for both programs. And then obviously there's so much input from all the amazing coaching team here throughout the season. Um, but I think that he is incredibly open-minded to our ideas and also willing to go down tangents with us and explore things and find the gray areas and push the limits. And it's such a fun process. At the end of the day, who arrived at the decision of, of this particular music? Was it a oh, decision? Or it, was, it, was, it was a group decision. We were all on the ice and we, it's a case of just, you can listen to something off the ice and have a vision, but once you're on the ice, it's totally different. And I think we could see, okay, this would work here. Okay, that really works there. This would be great for the Samba. And then when things start to align like that, there's just a certainty inside of all of us. And when you know, you know. Do you want to give us a peek as to some of the concepts that, that didn't ultimately... God, I don't even it? remember. There was like a little break dance. There was a break choice. dance moment, a wham moment. Wham was in there. I Honestly, every, everything you'd think of, we probably thought, well, we didn't think of it. Everyone listens to the music on Spotify and goes yeah. down like the, the best, biggest hits and everything. But um, yeah, ultimately, I'm really proud of where we ended up and really excited. Right. Unlike rhythm dances that are sort of season repeats, the waltz or the tango, something of that sort, where it's a new concept like this, like, do you approach it with some level of flexibility of if this doesn't work, we're gonna we're gonna change this up dramatically? Versus, you know, in the tango, there's there's you know sort of a yeah. requisite type of you know there's a there's a certain piece of music yes. that pulls off the shelf. Yeah. That, was that different this year for you? I think it, we had to be more open-minded to the flexibility because. I mean, we started with one idea and ended up with something that was completely different, but then is what we want to do, and we're so happy to be doing that. Um, but I think if you are too close-minded to one concept and don't embrace kind of the new rules and the new elements that are required, it's limiting. So I think it's better to just go with that and to get creative within the, the, fl the structured rules. Right. Some of your competitors have announced you know, what their rhythm dance music will be. Have you been following that? Have you sort of looked at some of those programs or snippets of those routines? Uh, I have not. Okay. I don't really go on social media a lot, so I'm kind of out of it. Yeah, like we've, I've only heard it in passing or um, seeing like the odd clip on mm -hmm. Instagram. And it's kind of like I'm hearing all the hits, which I mean, it's great. That's what like, we want. We all know yeah. the songs, and I think that's the fun part of 80s. Um, and so I'm excited to be on the practice on a warm up and just like singing along, kind of taking my mind off of what is actually happening. But what I love about this is that everyone can express their individuality within a genre. So there's so much to choose from, but then you're seeing, like even our training mates here, they choose pieces of music and we're like, oh, that makes so much sense for them. And look at them showing their strengths in this way. And if we did that, it would not look the same. So it's really great to see the versatility within the sport. Excellent. And your free dance. Talk to us about the choice of music and, and how that concept Oh, together. so this is my favorite program we've done, but I also love the rhythm dance. This season, they're my favorite programs. And I think for us, we were drawn to the story, full stop, because it is one of empowerment, finding your inner strength, overcoming adversity, and triumph within yourself, no matter what that looks like. And it's so well known, and all the movies are just absolutely fantastic and embraced worldwide. And I think to be able to tell that story on the ice, it's something we connect to as humans. I think everyone in the stands can relate to that storyline in some way. And we love performing, we love connecting with the audience, so to be able to tell that and to really feel it within our, in ourselves and to push ourselves on the ice in terms of the athleticism tied with the grace and to learn a new sport um, from scratch. It's been such a great challenge and I wouldn't have it any other way. Lewis? Yeah, I mean, everything she said is 
kind of rounded it up exactly. I think that, you know, it's that underdog story that people just absolutely cling to in life. And I think for us, we can relate to that a little bit. Um, and it's just, it's really great when, you know, like the music came together so easily for mm -hmm. this program. And I remember just listening to the first edit and I'm like, it already <laughs> feels like a mini movie within itself. Um, it, the flow of it was just so great. And I kind of knew in that moment, I'm like, this is it. Yeah, I've never felt that so much with the program. No. I don't think. And, and who chose the music? Oh, group effort once again. Okay. Um, we always listen, we start listening like way into the previous season because it's so hard to find good songs, honestly. Um, so we were really listening to this around worlds and both really loved it. And then, you know, rewatch all the movies and just start dreaming about the next season. And also that really helps with the end of a season because the, there's always a bit of a low after the high of a competition. So to have the excitement and the anticipation for this program and for the new season creative process, I think, is really invigorating. Did you start working on this sort of before Fantasy on Ice or did that happen after tour? Was it yeah, yeah, I think we yeah, finished we choreography it. before and then we would, while we were on Fantasy on Ice, we'd try to practice things like off ice while we, whenever we could or on the ice a little bit, but it was more just embracing that full experience and knowing that when we come back, we can hit the ground running. Right. Are there particular elements in this free dance that you're most excited to perform? Oh, the choreo stuff is really fun. I think it's a great opportunity to show the boxing sport, but also pairing that with the dancing style of the ice and like the, um, the dynamic nature of that and just the build towards the end of the program. We always love the choreo step and this is a really fun one for us. Um, I enjoy the slide because it's fun to slide across the ice. <laughs> so. Yeah, and for us, it was kind of, I remember the first season the slide was kind of brought out and we had a great slide on that season. And ever since then, it's always been that little challenge of like, how do we top this? Yeah. Um, and I feel like this time we sort of took a different approach to it and actually came up with something that was really great. So I was happy with that element. Mm -hmm. And I think in general, honestly, all of the elements or at least the skating elements, let's say not the lifts, but mm -hmm. I think all of that, we've really tried to shore skating skills yeah. and like the improvement that we've made on that. And I think that that was really highlighted in our first competition. I hope that we can keep progressing on top of that and just expanding the program as much as we can. Mm -hmm. You're competing first at Neville Horn. Yeah. Do you have specific goals at Neville Horn or what does that look like for you? Oh, well, Firstly, I love going there. Yeah. It's the most beautiful <laughs> setting. The rink is gorgeous. Every year we're like, we want to go, we want to go. Um, and I think for us, it's continuing to build because we had our starting point um, in Sheffield at the end of August and then we got feedback and we're, we implemented that feedback and now we get to put out our best product at this point. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, every time we go out and compete, we want to be really proud of what we did because that's the most satisfying feeling. You're going into, the, after Neville Horn, you're gearing up for the Grand Prix season. We do Nepala. I'm sorry, okay. Back to back. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, was why not? Is that an intentional decision yes. to do? <laughs> One trip to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, just efficiency. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the season, we have NHK followed by our nationals. So we wanted to get that practice of doing back to back events okay. and just learning the energy management that comes with that and keeping that competition spirit alive. Your, your Grand Prix events are Back to Skate Canada this year. Yes. And then, as you said, NHK, NHK where you've competed before. Yeah. Uh, does, it, does that feel good to sort of go yes. back to certain you know, it, events? I mean, are familiar? honestly, we're so lucky that we get chosen to do those Grand Prix. Yeah. Like the audiences in both places are amazing. They're just so great, so encouraging as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were, we were very lucky that we had one in Great Britain last year, but that's not happening. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think the next two best places for a crowd, honestly, like it was an hour experience. Yeah, that we've um, experienced. It's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, does being in Canada, I mean, I know, of course, you train in Canada, but does it help to be at Skate Canada, recognizing that, you know, you'll end the season at the World Championships in Montreal? Oh. So does it help to sort of be in front of another Canadian audience, or does that not factor in too much? I mean, it's very cohesive, nice full circle <laughs> moment. Um, <laughs> and I just love being in Canada because I have a lot of family here, so my grandma will get to come watch, and I just think, and all her friends, they'll do a little trip together. So it's just, it's nice to be able to feel that family love too, and then all of our friends and family will be able to watch in Montreal, and we're so excited. Right, right. 
In terms of your goals for this season, can, can you talk about those a little bit? Ooh. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, Lila really said it, and it's something that we pushed a lot last year, was just trying to be proud of every performance that we give mm -hmm. at that point in time. Yeah. Um, and I think we just look to grow upon each competition as well. I mean, of course, we would love to make it to the Grand Prix final again, and mm -hmm. I think that that's um, definitely at the top of our list of goals for the Grand Prix season. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just see from there, basically. Yeah, I think we've never really gone in with concrete number goals, yeah. score goals, because you don't know what's going to happen. And for us, when we do performances we're proud of, the best that we can do, that that always exceeds our expectations score and result wise. And I think that element of surprise in some way is it's really fun and something we like to stay open to. Okay, Bite the numbers aren't important. I'm gonna ask you about a couple numbers. Okay. Anyway, so you're, you're uh, you know, at the last World Championships, you were like three points from okay. the podium. Is the podium part of your contemplation? Does that, does that ever sort of Oh, definitely. I think okay. that's where everyone wants to be and to be that close, it's like, oh, that's very possible. Why not go for it? Okay. And, and you're also awfully close to breaking that sort of glass ceiling of 130 points for the free dance. Oh yeah. Is that sort of, is that? I'm so oblivious with scores. I okay. couldn't tell you so what our PB a, is. That's just a goal of ours. To get Great, I'll take it. I don't know what our personal best is. I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's more like for me the feeling, I know that's so annoying to say, but one thir breaking well, 130 would be really cool. Why not? It's true. I mean, we have like really high standards for ourselves when we compete and when we train every day as well. Um, and so if we feel like we can match those, mm -hmm. then generally the score comes with that. Yeah. I think we would be lying to ourselves if we came off the ice and we're like, huh? And not yeah. actually know that we kind of, well, nah, it was a we little- We didn't skate the best we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that, um, of course, we want to just keep rising the points yeah. <laughs> as always. As we rise our ability yeah. and, and the product. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, listen, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank to, you. To talk this was so nice. This Whatever the goals you know, <laughs> are and evolve over the course of the season. Yeah, we'll <laughs> find out. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank thanks you. for having us.